Hey guys, so I have been listening to a lot of Devin Townsend again lately, and I've been giving second and third listens to albums I haven't uh, quite talked about yet. Now, why haven't I talked about them yet? Well, often my favorite albums are ones that take me time to come around to. Sometimes I don't like them, you know, on the first listen. My brain is just fucking dumb sometimes. And by the way, I've taken these notes down, you know, uh, over the last few months, so this might seem kind of journalish. and if I repeat things that I've already said, it's because I forgot that I said them, and then months later, uh, I wanted to say them apparently again. So bear with me on that. This might not be super cohesive, but, uh, you know, your brain will piece it together, and uh, I think we'll make it through this. So as a starting point, I decided to go to the album that followed Ocean Machine, which is my favorite uh, of all his stuff, by the way. So I'm talking about Infinity from 1998, just a year after Ocean Machine. In true Devin Townsend fashion, Infinity doesn't sound really all that much like what came before it. And to echo what I said probably numerous times in my first Devin Townsend video, I'll just say it again. I cannot recommend Devin's podcast enough. It has been therapy for me when I needed inspiration, and I think you're missing out if you haven't heard it. And if you're wondering why I'm bringing that up right in the middle of talking about an album, it's because he did podcast episodes that coincide with particular albums, and during the making of the Infinity album, it was during the start of a severe depression spell, and it was interesting hearing him talk about mentally where he was at during this time period. I believe I'm on my third listen now uh, of this album, and I am loving it more each time, and I'm starting to see it for the classic that so many people feel that it is. I love the cosmic sound of the opening with the song Truth. It is heavy, but it's also uplifting and majestic. Also quite progressive, which is not uncommon for Devin, although he does not fully consider his music prog. I'd agree, since he doesn't like to repeat himself and his discography just has so much variety. Track 2, Christine, is a catchy, upbeat, kind of poppy and kind of punky rocker with lots of energy. Now, lyrically, it draws from the Phantom of the Opera, and he also has a nephew named Christine who was going through some tough times around, uh, around him writing this album. I feel like a lot of his songs have dual meanings. Would you agree? Track 3, Bad Devil, starts off with some cool organ-sounding keyboard work before lurching into some more upbeat riffing with a very swinging kind of, kind of sound. Uh, there's even a horn part uh, that further adds to that vibe. There's just really a lot going on in this song, and it's just kind of tons of fun, really. Track 4, War, is one of the longest songs here, clocking in at six and a half minutes. This is a mid-pace, kind of lurching song with Devin's signature chugging riff style, and I hear a little bit of an industrial influence here, which, uh, I mean, shouldn't be surprising since industrial music is a big part of Devin's musical history with Strapping Young Lad and his session work with Frontline Assembly, his interest in Godflesh and Fear Factory, all that. Track 5, Soul Driven Cadillac, actually quite reminds me of something that could have been on Ocean Machine. It's weird and almost psychedelic sounding, but in a unique Devon style, if that makes any sense at all. It's simply structured, but at the same time has a lot going on. I'd recommend listening to it a few times, just by itself. Track 6, Ants, is like a very cool tech metal song at the beginning before taking a crazy weird avant-garde turn. Some of the riffs here showcase Devon's guitar skills, something he really doesn't do all that often. I wonder if the Dillinger Escape Plan guys were listening to this closely. Track 7, Colonial Boy, is a slower, dirge-like, almost doom-laden song with a theatrical-type chorus, which is obviously not unusual for Devin. Halfway through it, it uh, kind of goes into this waltz-like thing that leads into some cool guitar work if you really pay attention. There is so much going on uh, on this album, but it really, and it, you know, it really kind of shouldn't work, but it somehow does. Track 8, Life is All Dynamics, is a somber-sounding tune. Has that fuzzy, washed-out production that really suits Devin's songs. Again, his background with industrial music and all. Uh, this song isn't somber the whole way through. It's, it's dynamic, I'd say. Uh, that is probably the best single word you could use to describe this album. I'm actually writing notes while listening to this song, and the last minute or so is just incredible. You'll have to hear it for yourself. This is not really music that you can put into words. 
track nine, Unity, is my favorite song here, and I hate the fact that my words just won't do it justice. The vocals here take the back seat, and there are not really many lyrics, so in a way it's almost an instrumental song. People call Devin Townsend a genius because of songs like this. The first half of the song has a lush, dreamlike atmosphere, but uh, it's the second half that really starts to get my attention. Uh, as you hear these symphonic elements, and it actually reminds me of the more brilliant uh, stuff from Alan Parsons' project. Uh, fucking outstanding, sir. Track 10, Noisy Pink Bubbles, is the album's closer. I kind of think that Unity should have closed the album, because how do you follow that? This is another electronic-sounding song. The repetitive drum beat and off-kilter guitar work give it uh, kind of a trance-inducing vibe. And like most songs here, it has many layers. So to sum up Infinity, it is just incredible, and it is considered a classic for a reason. Please give it the time it deserves, and you'll pick up new things each and every goddamn time you listen to it. Uh, this should be the type of an album that, uh, that you turn out the lights, you know, kind of close your eyes, shut your mind off, and just experience this work as a whole. So most of Devin's albums, as you might know, are, are pretty deep, and it has taken me time to hopefully properly absorb them. Um, so we're going to go ahead with uh, Physicist from 2000. Uh, this album has taken me a good amount of time and a good amount of listens to, to really kind of figure out. And if you have listened to the uh, Devin Townsend podcast, you might know that this is not an album that Devin really enjoyed making. His depression was at its highest point, and he was just not in a good place. The writing and recording process suffered because of this, and he has a lot of issues with the album because of it. Now, my initial problem was that, to me, it, it, this album just sounded too much like Strapping Young Lad. In fact, it is the SYL lineup, and he used the SYL members sort of because he felt so much guilt for ending the band. There was tension between Devin and the boys. But onto the music, the album kicks off with the song Namaste. It's a cool song, fairly heavy, though a little less maniacal sounding than most of, you know, the SYL stuff. And really, I mean, sonically that kind of sums up the album for me. And this album has the song Kingdom, which is one of Devin's most popular and well-known songs. I think we can all agree that the re-recorded version on the Epicloud album is the definitive version. And to me, Physicist is a heavy industrial metal album with, you know, Devin's kind of signature atmosphere. I imagine it's probably the SYL fan's favorite of his solo work, but what do I know? The album has finally grown on me, though. I'm happy to report that, but it's probably not something I'm ever going to return to very often. Uh, how do you guys feel about Physicist? Now, I'm going to talk about the Terria album from 2001. As I said with Infinity, Terria was a grower for me. When I first heard it, I was very into some of Devin's other albums, like Epicloud, Empath, and even Lightwork, so I was in kind of a different headspace. Honestly, I was a bit sad because I thought that Infinity and Terria would never grow on me, but I'm super happy to report that they totally did. If you have listened to Devin's podcast, I know I've talked about it a million times, uh, you might know that around the time of Terria, Devin had been working on his mental health. He had been prescribed some medications by his doctor, and they completely saved his life. Around the time of Infinity, he was spiraling down in a serious depression, and he had taken his issues out on people around him that he cared about, and depression is a hard thing to understand, let alone control. Around the Terria album, though, he had a much clearer mindset, and this was where he would apologize and make amends to those he may have hurt over the last few years. I myself have had to do this very same thing. Now I'm going to take a second to repeat myself in saying that if any of these albums don't resonate with you right away, set them aside and return to them later with a clear head. These works take time, but if you are a, uh, a big Devon fan, they will grow on you, and you will be happy that you took the extra time. Believe me, I'm so glad I didn't judge these albums after just one listen. The album starts out with a song called Olives, and it's more of an intro than a song, at least to me. I mean, to me, it sounds like walking into a martini bar while on codeine as the bartender asks you to have a seat and if you want uh, any olives in your drink. 
It is a very weird track, and though I may not understand what is happening, it kind of has a feeling of the beginning of a strange journey, as you enter some Alice in Wonderland-esque alternate realm, but I'm probably overthinking it. Track 2, Mountain, abruptly kicks in with a massive heavy riff, fitting for a song titled Mountain, I imagine. This song has lyrics that hit home for me. So far, I've logged so many hours with medications and the dog. Mountain is epic, a journey into itself. Like with Infinity, there is so much going on, hence the repeated listens pay off, and I highly recommend dedicating not only time, but your attention as well. Around the 4 minute 19 second mark, you can hear Devin's family dog barking. I believe his name was Happy, and he was a basset hound, I think, and if I remember correctly, he had cancer and had to be put down around this time. Sorry to drop that heavy nugget of info on you. Happy will be forever immortalized in this song. Track 3, Earth Day, is kind of an epic. It's not Devin's longest song, but it is long and the longest song on Terria. It's groovy, it's heavy, it's got subtle keyboard work, it's just awesome. His lyrics are hard to decipher sometimes, but my favorite line here is, Sometimes I think that in every straight there's a gay. Forgive me for saying it blows either way. <laughs> uh, this might be my favorite song on the album. Is it my favorite? Ah, let's, let's see, shall we? Track 4, Deep Peace. Is it me, or does Terria sound closer to the Ocean Machine sound than an Infinity or a Physicist? I seem to pick up on that in bits and pieces here, uh, either through the production or the effects and ambience and atmosphere, if you will. Deep Peace is mellow and peaceful, like the name. Mostly because nothing Devin does is super cut and dry, right? Track 5, Canada, continues in a similar vein as Deep Peace. One thing I appreciate about this album are the peaks and valleys. No two songs sound the same because Devin is truly a master songwriter. He has stated that he only feels at home in Canada. He has tried to live in other parts of the world but always returns. That is my assumption of what this song is about, but knowing Devin, I'm probably at least partially wrong. Track 6, Down and Under, is one of two instrumentals on Terria. It's a rootsy sounding one with crickets chirping in the background and an acoustic guitar jam. The song starts off very simple, but layers are slowly added on in the second half. It kind of brings in heavier electric guitars and some sparse chanting. Really, this kind of hard to consider an instrumental, but it is. Track 7, The Fluke, is a spacey sounding rocker with a lot of groove. Did I mention how weird it is for me to hear Gene Hoagland play stuff that isn't death or thrash metal? He really excels here, as he always does, but in a completely different way. Track 8, Nobody's Here, is a dreamy atmospheric song that, to me, feels like Devin still working through his depression. Especially if you read the lyrics, and with my own experience and understanding of depression and isolation, to live and lock yourself away, relax, it doesn't matter anyway. 9, Tiny Tears, has a title that was a play on Tiny Tears by Godflesh. I assumed this was uh, a, a song about Devin testing his wife's patience back around this time, which he has been very open about. This is also the second longest song on the album at 9 minutes and 13 seconds. It's not necessarily an epic, nor is it drawn out, considering its, you know, substantial length. Track 10, Stagnant, is clearly a song about depression, if you read the lyrics especially, but not in a particularly sad way, you know? It's quite an upbeat song, and in my opinion, it's about accepting depression, but not letting it win. You only lose when you stop fighting. Track 11 is another instrumental, and the album Closer, actually. It starts with a soft acoustic guitar and very audible bass before going into ambient noise for the duration. Now for a summary on the album, I won't lie, this was a hard album to talk about and dissect. I thought many times while taking notes that I should just quit this, but I decided to push forward and give it my best shot, and I hope you guys will come with me on this journey. If you are new to Devin's music, I'd be happy to guide you through this wonderful body of work. This was my third listen of Terria, and I'm not sure it's uh, more complex than Infinity, but it's an equally challenging listen. I, I thoroughly love this album, and it's quickly becoming like my top three or four uh, favorite Devin Townsend albums.